Hello and congratulations on getting access to this video course on Facebook page likes. Now, I want to make sure that you understand that this is not just about generating likes, which can in turn help you create more social proof, which leads to authority and all, all that good stuff. This goes beyond that. This also helps you with engagement levels, which Facebook, when they look at your Facebook fan page, Obviously, they care a lot about how people interact with your page and how good of an experience that they have. But I'm going to talk more about that. We're going to talk about how to utilize all of what we're going to teach you to create a winning strategy. You see, a lot of people tend to make the mistake of running ads in a tier one country immediately. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But a tier one country is basically like the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and a lot of the big countries that have big economic growth. So this is video number one, and let's first talk about mindset, quality versus quantity. Now, I know this might seem like a no brainer, but this is actually something that is commonly overlooked when it comes to this topic. A lot of people have this misconception that they can buy Facebook fan page likes and get a bunch of fans. Now, that might have been the case back in the day, but if you do that, unfortunately, with Facebook, you can get your Facebook fan page banned or totally removed, and you don't want that. You want to make sure that you get quality likes. In other words, it's better to have highly targeted quality likes, a thousand of them, versus 50,000 fan page likes. So that's what we're going at here. And we'll, we'll dive into it in a lot more detail in just a minute. But I want you to realize that whenever you drive quality traffic and quality likes, it's going to cost you a little bit of money. All right. So that's just a, a quick reality check. It's not going to cost you several hundreds or thousands of dollars. It's just going to cost you about 50 to a hundred dollars. So you need to keep that in mind whenever dealing with Facebook ads is going to cost money. Now, the downside with targeting tier one countries in terms of Facebook likes is it can cost a lot of money. It can cost anywhere from 10 cents to 50 cents a like to even several dollars. So how are we going to get around this? The strategy here is that we're going to be using and targeting tier two and tier three countries to achieve these goals. Now, what do I mean by that? Tier three are third world countries like Bangladesh and uh, all, a lot of other ones. We'll list them out just so you can see them. Tier two countries are countries that are having economic growth, but it's just not a tiered one. So tier twos are great. But tier three, the best thing about it is that a lot of these countries, when they log on to Facebook and they see an image that they like, even if they don't totally like it, they're going to like it. They're going to engage with you. So the tier three will actually help you in terms of increasing your engagement level which is very important to Facebook because they want to know, is your Facebook fan page generating a good user experience? Now, bear in mind that back in the day, if you bought 10,000 Facebook fan page likes or people who like the page, most of those people just sat, right? They didn't do anything. So that is why this is more beneficial than that. Now you might be asking, well, isn't this going to dilute the quality because we talked about quality versus quantity? Well, here's the reality check. It doesn't matter where you are located. A person with similar commonalities, whether they're in Bangladesh or United States or UK or wherever, they think like each other. Think about people who go through similar pains. Maybe they go through similar sickness like autoimmune diseases they all have the same, very, very same, maybe not exactly the same, but very, very similar pains, roadblocks, desires that they want to get better and all that, right? So similar when it comes to maybe sports or hobbies, somebody who likes a specific sport may deal with the specific and similar pains and all that. So even though you're testing it out in a tier three country, 
that's the that's the mindset that you need to have that the images that you test the content that you test and all that you test is if it works really well in that country the likelihood of it working well in the united states or a tier one country is going to be high now we're going to talk more about that in those videos but for now let me go over and give you a quick overview of what's inside this course. So video number two, we're gonna talk about why you want to have targeted likes. We talked briefly about this, but I'm going to expand on that and open your eyes to how that really will take things to the next level. Video number three, we'll talk about how to use likes to win in many of those areas. So we elaborate a little bit on video two, we go into more depth in video number three. Video number four, we're gonna talk about how to create five minute content. So in order to create more engagement, you're going to need to have content, right? So I'm gonna show you a simple trick to create content that actually resonates with your audience, but is super simple to create. Video number five, we'll talk about how to kill two birds with one stone. And video number six, we'll talk about uh, the likes ad campaign, which brings us to the like ad set in the likes ad. So video six, seven, and eight, those are just the steps that you need to take to actually run an ad campaign. Now here's what you're going to need. You're gonna to need to have a minimum of 50 to $100. Bear in mind, you will most likely you'll start out with three to five cents alike, but as time goes on and you improve your campaign, you can generally speaking, get it down to one, two or three cents. So with that in mind, you can get the calculator and multiply that and see and get an idea of how many actual likes that you'll get. Now you will need to have some money to purchase tools to create content fast. Otherwise, if you don't really have that money, you can also do it for free. And I'll show you how to do that and give you pointers on that. You also need to have a fan page and a good idea of who your ideal customer is, their problems, their desires, their wants, their demographics. What do they do? What do they not like doing? What do they look like? Those are very, very crucial when it comes to this, because this will allow you to target people at least get an idea for now. And as you get the data, you will begin to uh, paint a better picture of what they actually look like. All right, so let's move on to video number two. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. And my purpose of this video is to walk you around, show you a real live fan page and show you the process of why you need to have targeted Facebook fan page likes. Now, while that may seem like a no brainer, I wanna share with you the whole process, how it works from the beginning to the end, so that you understand how to set up your Facebook fan pages, because your Facebook fan page may not be set up correctly to actually implement this strategy, all right? So, when it comes down to it, you wanna make sure, number one, that you choose an image of a person that fits the demographics of your fan page. Now, obviously, if that is you, that's fine, that's great. But if your demographics are primarily women, you might wanna choose a woman of that age. If it's men, choose men and so forth. So as you can see here, this image here, I'm using a royalty-free image of a woman because that fits this demographic. Now, I wanna show you something really cool because I haven't really touched this particular fan page in months, but yet it still runs itself simply because I'm utilizing the strategy of honing in on very, very specific targeted audiences. So as you can see here, I have just reached 20,000 page likes. And if it averages out to about a penny alike, then that's about $200. But realistically, when we ran the campaign, it was about three cents to about five cents. Now, like I said, we haven't really touched this for months in almost half a year, but it still runs itself. Now, as you can see, the content that I'm using 
they're basically images with quotes on them. And we chose the quotes that relate to the audience so that it resonates with them. So as you can see, 120 people were reached, three engagements, and this was actually released just a couple hours ago. And here's another one. So as you can see here, this was released actually a couple days ago. Another quote on an image. You can see 182 people were reached, two engagements, and two people liked this particular content piece. So what I'm showing you is, and I want, want you to understand, is that once you run these like campaigns, even if you stop them, because the traffic is so targeted, the engagement continues on. So it's kind of like a snowball effect. It just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. And the $200 that you invest for the 20,000 or the 10,000 likes, that will continue on and on for months to come. So I want you to understand and be able to see that in the future so that you understand that you know, this is not just a one-off thing and it's just going to tank kind of thing. Now, in terms of how to create these images with the quotes, I will actually show you a tool that we use that uh, you'll be able to get the quotes and you'll be able to get the images. And it's just a matter of clicking a few buttons and you'll be able to create these tiny pieces of content really, really fast. What we found through testing is that most people they once they visually see something and they see a quote that resonates with them and the quote relating to the image it actually creates uh, an impact it makes them intrigued it, it gets them to engage so we'll talk about that in future videos but for now i really just wanted to show you that what we do here is we run a ad campaign and we target people specifically towards this image now when we create the campaign, which I'll show you in just a minute, we don't target just one generic thing. So we actually target, typically we do research and we do research and find out, is there a business, is there a software app, is there a website that relates to this here? And then we target that audience with something uh, motivational like this. And what ends up happening is uh, Facebook notices, aha, there, there's an engagement and there's even engagement even after the ads are finished running. So that means uh, that this fan page must be good. It must be having a good experience to get people to come and back. Here's another example. So I went to the notifications and as you can see here, it is actually November 30th as I'm recording this, but you can see that it's November 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. So this obviously attracted somebody who might've been the person who clicked on the ad, or it might've been the friend of the friend. You see, so a lot of times people share motivational quotes or something that resonates with them. And then the snowball effect just continues. So even if you get 10,000 likes, that 10,000 likes could multiply to 15 or even 20,000 likes over time. Now, obviously there is gonna be a drop off if you haven't touched it for months or even uh, years. Uh, but the point here is that if you do have the ad campaigns running, uh, you should just continue that snowball effect. Now, on top of this, I wanna mention that when it comes to running ads, a lot of times if you find that a image resonates with that of that country, that specific niche in that country. So even if it resonates really well with people in Bangladesh and then you find that it resonates with another third tier country, that's a good sign because now you're able to test what images actually work and what images don't work and which images are actually converting into page likes. So that's something that we figured out. And so instead of trying to test things in the United States of America or United Kingdom or Canada up front, because what will end up happening is you'll spend thousands of dollars trying to test things out, trying to figure things out versus you're testing pennies of a dollar with these penny likes and you're testing images to see which one works. And then you take that information and then you set it up and you target it towards a tier one country. That is when you are able to kind of set things up for success, which we'll talk about more 
in the next video. But I wanted to show you this for now so that you can kind of get some motivation that this is going to work for you. If you follow the steps and if you create the targeted campaigns with the targeted content pieces. Now you might be asking, well, this is all great, but how do I make money as a business, you know, with the system? Well, what I'm showing you now is mainly the engagement side of things. So when Facebook allows you to run ads, for example, a lot of times they will disapprove your ads. But what we've seen over time is that a few things, if you spend more money in terms of ads and your site gets a lot of engagement and it has a lot of likes, like 20,000 20, likes, it tends to not disapprove your ads as much. So that's just something that we found over testing. So instead of spending thousands of dollars figuring that out for yourself, you can learn that from us. So think of this kind of like the engagement machine and the social proof and authority building machine. And on the other side, on the back end, you can run ads that have nothing related to this. So that way you can get a better relevance score. Basically what that means is that you're driving ads, you're driving traffic, people are coming to your Facebook fan page or your ad and they're engaging with it. And we'll talk more about how what we're talking about here, this strategy creates a winning strategy for you in the next video. Hello and welcome back. In this particular video, we're gonna talk about how the likes that you generate are going to help you create a winning strategy. So I gave you kind of a bird's eye view of how it can help you build social proof, engagement, authority, and then expand to testing different content pieces, and then of course applying that to tier one countries. So I wanted to give you an example here and show you what my Facebook ads manager look like and what that looked like in terms of, you know, different campaigns, different ad sets, different ads that have been set up utilizing this strategy and uh, what that looks like so that you can apply that yourself. So I wanted to show you real quick, these here, these different rows are showing different countries. So you can't really see it now, but as I scroll down, you'll see it in just a minute. So generally speaking, we'll run daily budgets of about $1 to $5. Now you can see some of these are getting 29 likes, 20, 221 likes, and then you can see the results. And then of course you can see the cost per result. So some of these are getting about nine cents a like, and then some of these are getting three cents or one cent, and then some are getting, you know, 34 cents. Now I want to be, transparent and honest and say that the majority of times you will not start out of the gate with a campaign that is getting you one cent or, or even three cents per like. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So this is when it comes down to testing different images. You see, a lot of times when you're trying to figure out what actually resonates with your audience, it's really hard, right? If you're doing like search engine optimization, it's kind of hit or miss. You're guessing and trying to figure out what is actually resonating with people. And a lot of times because SEO takes time, it takes sometimes months to about six months, you may never even know what is working and what is not working until half a year later. But with paid ads, yes, you do have to spend a little bit of money, but you're, what you're trying to do here is you're buying data. So I want you to understand that when you run ads, you're not necessarily trying to get a result right away. You're trying to see where the market goes, where your audience goes in terms of steps. Okay. They take a step. They like your page. What next? Do they like your page? Do they not? Is there a reason why does the sales copy or the, the words that you use resonate with them? Do the images resonate? Do they not? So I briefly touched base on this previously, but being able to test things out with pennies is a lot better than having to spend dollars, right? Or pounds or euros. So as you can see here, if I scroll down, 
you can see that for some of these, I've targeted the US and uh, gotten it down to about seven cents, which is not bad. But as you can imagine, if, if I tested it out, like over here, this is US stores, it would have been about 34 cents just out of the gate or even more. Sometimes it would be, would be actually a dollar per like. So if I scroll down here, you can see Asia. This encompasses Asia, excluding Philippines. And I got about dollar daily budget, 8,371 page likes. So that's the result. And then of course, cost per result was one cent. So we spent $92 and we got a good amount of likes. Now, whenever I see this, I wanna break things down further and maybe test out a different image and see what works. Now, as you can see here, we've targeted the Philippines and you can target a country and then a specific age group. What I recommend is you target the age group that has been resonating or that looks like your customers. If your customers are mainly like 50 to 70, then focus on that. But at the same time, you don't want to disregard potential audiences that might be interested in your product. So as we scroll down here, we've got Philippines, 3,848 likes for about two cents. So we scroll down further. When it says third W, that's with third world countries. So those are tier three countries. And I basically just took a bunch of third world countries and just put them all in into one campaign. Now, ideally, you would probably want to split them up into different countries, but just to make things faster, I did that. So as you can see here, I've got penny likes, literally pennies right there. Now, like I said, bear in mind that even though these are third world, world or even tier one, two, or three countries, or t mostly tier two and three countries, the fact that they're targeted means that they are going to like, comment, and share the posts that are actually going to go up on the Facebook fan page. You see what I mean? So that's what is powerful about this is you get the engagement aspect, which actually will help you in the long run. So the goal here is to just make you aware that going down this route, testing these tier two and three countries is actually a really good thing. And that is something that your competitors are not doing. A lot of times they'll disregard it because they're thinking, well, it's not targeted. I'm not targeting you know, people overseas or anything like that. So this is thinking outside of the box. Okay, so what I just showed you previously, those were the ad sets. And the ad sets allows you to target a specific country, a specific demographic. Now, right below that, you have the ad level. And these are ads or images, content, headlines, and all of that. So as you can see here, this allows me to test different images, what resonates and what doesn't. And this image right here, I put a $7 daily budget. It got 3,641 page likes for a penny each. And the relevance score was seven, and that's actually good. So a lot of times people will get relevance scores of one or two or three, and that's not a good thing because if it's, if it's low like that, what will end up happening is you'll actually spend more money. The higher the relevant score, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, up to 10, the lower you will actually pay because Facebook wants to reward people who have ads that create a good experience, right? So if we scroll down further, we can see for the most part, you know, it's, it's relevant score seven and then eight. So this one did really well. This one was seven. This one was six. And then we look at the six and then we're like, okay, this one actually got a, a decent amount of page likes, even though it was a lower relevant score, it made it up for it with a good amount of page likes. So you do want to take into consideration the likes, the cost, and all of that before you decide, okay, this is not a good image, this is not a good text, or anything like that. So 
I wanted you to see this so that you understand the process and that you understand that it all starts from a targeted like, and then it goes from there all the way down here. And then it creates that snowball effect that generates more likes and more engagement to your Facebook fan page. Okay, before we talk about how to go about creating the content with the images and the quotes, you really need to think about carefully what images or even quotes resonate with your audience. So you might be thinking, well, I sell like scuba diving stuff or basketball stuff. Then what you could do is you could find celebrities in that niche and then find quotes from them kind of thing. So you kind of have to get a little bit creative in this case, but you want to think what images would stand out and what quotes would stand out. Now, there's a site called GetStencil.com. That's GetStencil.com. So it says stencil here, but it's GetStencil.com. And uh, you can log in and they'll give you access to a ton of quotes and a ton of really good looking images. So let's say, for example, that we are in the business niche. So we'll type the keyword in business and uh, we are focusing on, let's say, business women. So let's say this one resonates with the demographic. So what we wanna do is we want to click it like so. We can move it around. And of course we want to delete the other text, put it down here. And we want to find a photo that resonates with that demographic. So we could type in business woman and see what we get. So we could do something like, like this maybe. Now, obviously that does not, you cannot read that. So you're gonna to need to play with it a little bit until the text fits in like that. Like that. And then maybe the size is just too big. So we get that there. And then maybe we put that here. Like that. Okay, so once you like it, all you have to do is you can click save or save it to a collection, which is basically like a folder, or you can click download and then upload that to Facebook. Now, what's really cool about Get Stencil is they have a feature where uh, once you have all the images created, you can use their share feature and right click and connect it to your Facebook fan page. So within Get Stencil itself, you can actually share the image instead of having to log in to Facebook and do all that. You can also hire a freelancer to, you can say, I want you to log in every single day at this time, this such and such time, and then do a share from Get Stencil and go from there. So that way people are constantly engaging with your content. Now, something that we found that works really well is to get an idea of kind of a central location or a central time that might be midday or during a certain time where your audience is free and then post during that time. So that's it. That's uh, all we do is create images that resonate with the audience and then words, whether they're quotes, whether you can find them here or elsewhere on Google. And that's all we do. Take these, create these content, uh, create hundreds, hundreds of these images, and then just post them on a daily basis. One thing you want to do is, and keep this in mind, is to be consistent. Uh, people like consistency because it's predictable. So if you upload an image, make sure you do it every day. Or if you communicate with them and say, we're going to upload every other week or every week, you don't want to do every other week. That's, that's too long. But every other day kind of thing or twice, three times a week. 
So that is how to create the very, very simplistic five minute or even less content. And that's all we do is you don't have to get fancy. You don't need article content or anything like that. Your whole goal right now is to build engagement and build those fan page likes and show people that are looking at your page like, hey, this is an engaging and people are getting engaged, people are active, come join this community. Because a lot of times if you yourself, if you're looking at a fan page and it's all empty, then you're not gonna wanna join. But if you see a lot of people you know, communicating, commenting, liking, sharing, psychologically you think, oh, there must be something interesting, right? So that's it, and let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number five, and in this video we're gonna talk about how to kill two birds with one stone. So this phrase or saying is basically focusing on one thing that will allow you to save time and allow you to essentially achieve the goal of two things, which in this case, is social proof, and second of all, engagement. Okay, so we talked briefly about earlier that the social proof aspect is just the likes, right? But it's not just the likes, it's also the content, right? The second thing, which is engagement, can only be achieved if you drive targeted likes or targeted visitors, right? So essentially this video is all about the conversion factor because in the previous video, we talked about how to go about creating content within less than five minutes, which are basically images with quotes on them, right? So how do we create or get images that resonate with your targeted audience? And how do we figure that out? A lot of cases, a lot of times we think, oh, we, we know that, we know our audience pretty well, and we'll just pick and choose some images. But that's the wrong mindset to have because just because we think that is the case or we think that's what they would like, it's not always the case. So what you need to do is you need to figure out several different images that might be similar but slightly different. For example, for this fan page, we have a dog, a picture of a dog. We know the demographic is mainly women and these particular women may like dogs. So we have a cute dog here. And then of course, a day without laughter is a day wasted. Nicholas Chamfont. So that's a quote that sort of ties into the cute puppy. So it's saying that you need to laugh every single day. And this looks kind of funny. All right. So that's one image that we could test. Another image that we could test would be something similar, maybe another dog but with a, a different quote. So that's what we did in this case. Now, this was actually just uploaded recently, so you can see it's only got 82 people reached. But this one here is a picture of another dog with some quote that says, kindness is the best key to open the locked door of every heart. So this is a little bit more sentimental. It's not more laughter but we can see that it's got 258 people reached and 11 engagements versus the other one that had no engagements at all. So we haven't even run ads yet, but if we do run ads, then we can test these two up against each other and see what actually converts. Now, in terms of images, what I recommend is whatever your niche is, whatever your market is, Try to test different images, different images ranging from different things that relate directly to the, the product and service that you're selling or things that are unrelated or things that make people laugh, make people feel good inside kind of thing. And just test it out and see which one gets the most engagement. And that's all we're trying to figure out right now because in terms of setting up the ad campaign, the ad set level, and the ad, that's what I'm gonna teach you in the next three videos. So for now, it's just a matter of gathering images that you think would convert. And then by the next three videos, you'll see whether or not they will convert or not based on the tier three country traffic. So that is gonna allow us to test 
images by only spending literally 10, 20, 30, or even $50 versus uh, testing it against a tier one country initially and spending hundreds or even thousands of dollars before you even uh, figure out what actually works. So that's what I want you to do for now is just do that. Now I want you to go to different sites. There's several sites out there that will provide you with these uh, kind of royalty free images. Get Stencil was one of them. Uh, but if you don't see anything that you don't like on Get Stencil, there are actually other sites out there. Okay, so there are two websites that we use uh, for almost the last decade. And uh, the first one is Big Stock Photo. That's bigstockphoto.com, as you can see here. This, uh, they have really good images and uh, it does cost money, obviously. Another one is called graphicriver.net. And if you go here, you can actually go to photos and you'll find photos for about two bucks. Now, if you're low on money and you want something for free, then there's another site called pixabay.com and you can go there, you can sign up and you can find a lot of really good royalty free free images uh, that allow for commercial use. And as you can see, it looks uh, just as good. There's just a more of a limited variety compared to that of like Big Stock Photo or even Graphic River. So now that you have a idea of what to do, which is gather the images, want you to pause the video, figure that out. And then in the next three videos, I'm going to show you how to actually set up your ads. Hello and welcome back. This is video number six and we're going to start the ad creation process right now. But before we do, what I've done here is in the next three videos is to break things down as simplistic as possible, especially for those of you who have never run a Facebook ad or you have, and it just looks very complex. So in this video, we're going to talk about campaigns. In the next video, we're going to talk about ad sets. And then of course, video number eight, we'll talk about ads. Now the ads, let's go ahead and click create and I'll explain the structure. So go ahead and click create here. Okay, so now we've brought to a campaign. So here's basically how it works. A campaign, think of it like a folder on your computer or a physical folder or whatever. That's just a big folder. And then within that folder, you have many different folders or, or think of it like this. This is a filing cabinet. And then within the filing cabinet, you have many different folders. And then within each folder, you have many different ads, right? So it's just a way to kind of categorize things. So in this case, our goal is to get more page likes, right? So that's an engagement factor. So we are going to specify and tell Facebook, Hey, we want to create a campaign and our objective is to get more likes. That's all. And I'll discuss more about these uh, in, in the future videos for now. Let's just focus on campaign. So it says, go ahead and choose your objective. So in this case, it's going to be under engagement. So you click that and then next you scroll down. And then Facebook now asks us what kind of an engagement do you want a post engagement? Do you want page likes? Do you want event responses? All right. So in this case, it's page likes. We're going to click that here and you can name the campaign name here. So what I recommend is whenever you create an ad to make sure to kind of create a system of your campaign names, because when you begin to create more campaigns, it'll just get confusing. So you could insert things like maybe who you're targeting or who, what it is. So engagement likes, you could do X fan page, whatever fan page that is. And we can do page likes that way we know what we're dealing with. So if we're looking through our campaigns and we look at the names of the campaigns, instead of having to go in and try to figure out what it is, you can figure out it all off the bat. Next thing is create split tests. We're going to totally ignore that. We're not interested in that. You can do that later if you want to, but 
you want to try to simplify things as much as possible. Now, campaign budget optimization. What is that? According to Facebook, it's a system and it's an algorithm that will basically distribute your budget across different ad sets to get more results. And basically you're using their AI or artificial intelligence to figure out, okay, which of these ad sets are converting and then let's focus on those ad sets. Now, bear in mind with campaign budget optimization, in order for it to work effectively, you will need to increase your daily budget. So right now they say 125, but we recommend probably $10, $20 just to get started right off the bat. Now you can start with $5 if you want to and test how it works. But with the way campaign budget optimization works is it's trying to analyze different campaigns. And in order for you to get enough data, you have to run some money through each and every one of those ad sets, if that makes sense. So let's say the system has to run it through at least a couple thousand people before it can get the right data. But the way you have to think of it like this, with paid ads, it's all about buying the data. It's not about winning out of the gate. But fortunately, with this strategy here, you can lower your cost. Okay, so at this point, we're just gonna say $10 daily budget. Now you can specify lifetime budget if you want to, but we like to stick with daily budget, the campaign bid strategy, lowest cost, lowest cap. We usually stick with lowest costs and click continue. Okay, so at this point, we are at the ad set level. So I'm gonna stop here and pause a minute. And what I highly recommend that you do is try to follow along, try to create a campaign, choose the engagement, choose page likes, and get to this point. All right, so let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome back. This is video number eight, and we're gonna talk about how to create an ad. So if you've reached this far, just want to say congratulations, you're almost done. All you need to do is get the images that we discussed earlier and upload them here. Now, because our strategy is to get both social proof, the page likes, and the engagement, which is getting people to interact with your Facebook fan page, not just the likes, because when somebody comes to your page, the likes are the initial attraction, and then seeing people actually interacting with your fan page is the next step. So to do that, what you need to do is when you go to the ad, you can either create a new ad and insert images here, or you can use an existing post. So what you wanna do is you want to use an existing post for the majority of time, simply because you want to drive people to that specific post, you want people to interact, and it's, it's a two bird with one stone. So in this case, you're not just driving people to an ad that is not on your Facebook fan page, but you're instead driving people to a post that is on your page. So you're getting the engagement, you're getting the likes. And the more money you put into it and the lesser you spend in terms of the likes, that will actually help you double or triple the social engagement. Now you can also create an ad just to test different images as well separately from your posts by simply adding the images here and then down here, adding the text and adding the links. Now, remember, because we are simply sending people to images with quotes on them, the text that you might want to add is something like this. Like, hey, we are, if you like a specific hobby, then our community is filled with people just like you. And you're welcome to join. So something of that nature, non-threatening, non-direct, it builds a little bit curiosity and gets them to like. That's the goal, is not to include too much information, but just enough to get people to come, interact, and like your page. Now, what's nice about Facebook is when you enter a bunch of ads, so let's say we enter five different images or four different images, so we can test two to two against each other. If we got four images, four texts, four links, what Facebook will do is it'll actually rotate them. So 
essentially you don't want to have too many because in order to really test them, you're going to need to push a lot of money inside. So what you might want to start out with is four images or two images or four between that range, two to four, two, three, four, and then maybe a couple texts, one or two texts, and then maybe two different links. And then let Facebook's artificial intelligent test things out and actually figure out which is actually converting and then go from there. Once you figure it out what is converting, let's say out of the different ads of four different images, let's say you got one, two, three, four, and then two of them are doing really well, but then two of them are costing a dollar a like. In those other two cases, if you're getting enough traction from the other two, you should go ahead and pause those just to see what happens. Now, you want to run them at least for 48 to 72 hours so that you allow Facebook's algorithm to adjust because a lot of times you're not going to see results immediately. Sometimes you will, but different scenarios are going to be different. So that's pretty much it. So as a recap, add the images here, add the text, add the links, click continue, and then your Facebook ad will get approved. Now, bear in mind that if you're beginning and you're just getting started, it's going to take a lot longer to get approved. But as you get more likes, like your likes go up to 10 or 20,000 and you begin to run more ads and you spend more money, then your reputation will go up <clears throat> and then your ads will get approved. Now, that's not a guarantee because no one really officially knows, but this is just based on tests. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. Just keep it simple and apply it. And there you go.